T-Row prices continue to see its stock price decline. This decline can be mainly explained by the decline of T-Row's assets under management, which in turn leads to a decrease in fees and thus in revenue for T-Row. If we look at the last 12 months, the stock price has seen a high of $134.64 and a very recent low of $95.75. The stock price was $126.79 on the 28th of July and has been in free fall since then. Hard to believe it was as high as $225.65 on the 27th of August 2021. This is a huge 57.56% decline to its recent low price. As a shareholder myself, I have an average buy price of $105.51, so it's well below that now. I'm wondering if now is the time to take advantage, or are we still trying to catch a falling knife? I'm going to briefly look at the dividend history, how the stock has performed over the past 10 and 20 years, plus a look at the financials, analyst predictions, and the intrinsic value and fair price. So if we start with the dividend history, on t Row's website they have a breakdown of all the dividends paid since 1986. It's seen regular increases and a few stock splits. The last stock split was 2006, then from then on, T-Row has seen nice increases year on year, going from $0.17 in 2007 to $1.22 today. Dividend growth has been really strong, having a 10-year CAGR of 12.63%, 5-year at 12.73%, and 3-year at 11.99%. T-Row is going through a lot of turbulence at the moment, and potentially through 2024, depending on the macro environment, so dividend growth could be slow. Let's have a quick look at how it's performed against the S&P. If you'd invested $10,000 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you would have a total return of 72.22%, ending with a value investment of $17,225.16. A solid return, but nothing in comparison to the S&P, which gave a 189.72% return with $28,979.62. Over 20 years though, t Row has performed much better with a 707.99% return with a total value worth $80,814.75 beating the S&P which would have given you a 488.53% return. For transparency, invest in the S&P ETF monthly as well as individual stocks for diversification to ensure all bases are covered. If we have a look at the financials, it has a market cap of $21.84 billion, a very low price to sales value. Payout ratio is 72.13%, which is on the high side. t Row can cover the dividend, but ideally you want it to be below 60%. The payout ratio history has had an average of 39% over the last 10 years, 72% being the highest, which it is at the moment. The fact that it has been the highest in the last 10 years is a red flag and should be monitored. Against 719 other companies in the asset management industry, t Row's payroll ratio is better than more than half of them. The revenue history shows strong growth year on year since 2009. Last year was the first time revenue has dropped in the time period, seeing a 15% drop. 2021 was a big year for revenue and saw a big jump from 2020. For perspective though, although 2022 dropped, it was still more than 2020. If we switch to quarter, the last two quarters have seen increases. EBITDA mirrors 2022 and 2021 revenue chart. The big one, free cash flow, dropped by 1 billion in 2022, a 33.96% drop. The last quarters are positive but not great. Net income, a little bit higher than free cash flow. Earnings per share is actually solid and moving in the right direction. A 24.1% increase on last year with the last two quarters seeing increases as well. Cash to debt is always good. This is what I really like about t Row. No debt and the last two quarters have seen increases in cash. Dividends we've mentioned. Shares outstanding has gradually been coming down. We haven't seen huge buybacks. In 2014, there was 268.7 million shares outstanding compared to 225.2 million today. That's a 16.21% decrease. So it's heading in the right direction. Return on capital employed has also seen improvements in the last two quarters. Overall, t Row has seen slight improvements, but not setting the world alight. Zax is expecting a report of a decline in earnings in Q3. They are expecting $1.78 per share, which is a 4.3% decline. If this happens, this could see the stock price dropping further. Obviously, if it beats estimates, it'll go the other way. 
they do expect revenue to be up by 3.4%. Let's see what analysts are forecasting. Market B had an average price target of $96.64, which is 0.38% downside from where we are today based on 11 analysts. TIT ranks have an average price target of $100.60, which is 4.43% upside from where we are today based on 10. And Zacks have an average buy price of $99.36, which is 3.15% upside from where we are today based on 11. Low targets from Market Beat, TIT ranks, and Zacks. An average price between the three is $98.66. If we head over to value investing, I've had a look at what the intrinsic value calculations are based on the dividend discount model. It has a fair price of $78.79, which is 18.2% downside. And if we look at trading multiples, it has a fair price of $89.82, which is 6.8% downside. If we take the average of the analyst expectations and the investing models, that would give us an $89.09 target with a 10% margin of safety that would be a buy price of $80.18. A bearish and realistic outlook of the current state of the market. I don't see T. Rowe making huge rebounds anytime soon. I'm in it for the long haul though. I would be happy to slowly accumulate if it drops below $90. Low in my average buy price and keep collecting those dividends. T. Rowe now yields at over 5% and that is hard to ignore. As usual, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe.